Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Today we're talking about running a niche beauty business. We have first time guest and industry expert, Nakia Londi here today. I cannot wait for you to meet Nakia. Let me tell you about her. She is an undisputed trailblazer in the realm of hair augmentation. She is the founder and CEO of Intriguing Hair, a leading provider of high quality human hair extensions, hair pieces, and wigs with a formidable 18 year track record of industry innovation. Nakia has carved a niche for herself, serving women of all ethnicities with unparalleled expertise in hair integrations, hair loss solutions, and non-surgical hair replacements. She is also a highly sought after speaker and consultant known for bringing a rich reservoir of knowledge and a unique perspective to every engagement. Her electrifying presentations are not merely inspiring, but also serve as a catalyst for change and innovation, igniting novel ideas and fresh perspectives. Clearly you see why I had to bring this woman here. I'm so excited to have you. Welcome Nikia Londi to Beyond the Technique. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. For I'm going to just say this right off the bat. For everybody listening, go to Beyond the Techniques YouTube channel and watch today's episode. It's amazing to see the faces behind the names and you have to check out Nakia's hair. It is gorgeous. And I'm assuming this is part of your incredible line. Yes, absolutely. I'm all, <laughs> you always catch me in a wig or a hair piece, something. <laughs> it, it's beautiful. Thank you and so much. And I have for everybody listening the link to follow Nakia's brand on Instagram, over 55,000 followers, gorgeous content, and you are working with really incredible people who love your hair. So anyway, we're going to get to that. Let's go back to the very beginning of your beauty industry journey, Nakia. Mm -hmm. How did you get into the beauty industry to begin with? Um, I will say that I've always had a love and passion for hair. It's my thing. I'll, I'll die with hair. Um, uh, so I'll say in seven, at seven, age 17, I went to cosmetology school. So I went to cosmetology school and I, the great thing that happened is that my first internship, I worked with a industry pioneer named Sarah Douche. Um, she is incredibly smart, brilliant, has a wonderful business till this day. She still mentors me and she specializes in hair augmentation. And at that time, even at 17, I had been wearing hair extensions since the age of 12, which is kind of sick and crazy. But um, at around 17, I also started importing hair from Europe and Asia because I always needed high quality hair. It was just something I was obsessed about. Like my friends, like they were worried about like the Backstreet Boys and music and sneakers, but I've always been passionate and loved hair for some reason. I don't know what it is. I've just always been passionate and loved loved it. Um, so I worked for her and she was just incredibly like just brilliant. I just loved how she ran her business, to be honest. Like when I tell you she was, she was just amazing. Like she owned every single building on the street. I remember one day I worked for her and I was just counting all the money that she made that day. And I was like, wow, she really just made $50,000 today. Like I was just like, so like flabbergasted and amazed by her. Um, and she taught me a lot about how to run a business correctly. Um, so when I actually started my own business and decided I wanted to work for myself, um, me being African-American and I being in the industry for so long and going to hair extension places and things like that. Um, one of my really big pain points was that Sometimes I would go get my hair extensions done and I would have like an appointment at like nine in the morning, but I wouldn't leave till like 10 o'clock. And that was just, just very industry strength standard for like where I went, like in New York and Boston, where it wasn't really ran correctly. And I was like, I want to do the same thing that we did at um, Salon Newton for African-American women, where it's mm -hmm. a well-run organized place where there's certified hair extension specialists, because, you know, when you go to cosmetology school, it's not taught, but that we knew all the different types of way to install hair extensions the right way. And then we also had that quality product. So that's where Intriguing Hair began. To, um, and August will be celebrating 10 years. So I'm extremely, extremely, extremely excited about that. And um, I actually co-founded 
the company with my husband and he still stays on today with like a lot of the marketing that you see on our social media channels and our websites. And he does a lot of the events that we go to, like we're really, um, we're gearing up in two weeks because we're going to be going to Essence Fest. So we're really excited about that. Oh my gosh. Okay. There's so many inspiring things here that we need to break down. Yes. So <laughs> how long before you started your own business, were you kind of behind the chair providing services elsewhere? I will say um, a good 11 years. Okay. So um, I, I went to cosmetology at 17, cosmetology school at 17. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing like, I'm, I'm, I'm a constant learner. So you never, you never know everything. So till this, I still do trainings till this day because there's so many new techniques out there. Um, but I opened up my um, location when I was 28. So still so young and very, very yes. inspiring. I was young, but you know what? I, I, I credit my, um, I always had really great mentors and I always tell everyone that it's, it makes the best sense to watch someone who's done it before. Mm -hmm. You learn so much from, by, by just watching, I, you know, like I can go to these people and say, Hey, I have this problem. They've already experienced it. They know the good, the bad. And then I take from what they tell me and I make my next move. I don't always consider my, like my, I'm not the know-it-all. I don't know everything. Um, I have a really incredible team of mentors that I constantly, you know, keep in contact with and they help me along the way. And I do the same for my employees and anyone that contacts me. So, you know. Well, speaking of employees, did you start your company solo or did you build work to build a team right away? So I started with me and my husband at first. Um, and I already had a great reputation in the industry. And what we did is what he always says is that we started really from the trunk of our car, which is absolutely true. Um, so we originally started um, just selling the hair extensions and wigs. Okay. And I knew I already had a huge customer base of people that loved, liked high quality. So what I did was I contacted all the stylists and the salon owners that I knew. And I said, I have this incredible product. I'm starting my business. And what I will do is if you have a customer and you need me at any time, it could be eight o'clock at night, it could be two in the morning, I'll come to you. So I literally did that for about six months. Wow. And I started my website at the same time. And it literally took off almost immediately. And I was talking to my cousin, who's also in the industry. And she said, well, why don't you, because I'm like, I'm open, I'm, I want to open up a store in Boston. And she's like, well, why don't you guys do the hair too? And I was like, be a one-stop solution. She's the one that was like, and I was like, you know what? Duh, that makes the most That's sense. so obvious, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, that makes the most sense. And um, the interesting thing is, is that the two people that I start work started with, they work with me today. One had left and went off on her own, but now she's back. And so I have two incredible certified hair extension specialists, which I consider probably to be the best in the industry. They both have a high um, celebrity clientele. And I mean, they're like, their installations are flawless. Like you can't even tell that it's hair extensions or wigs. Um, I, I think I'm great, but I, I know they're better than me. So um, it's always incredible to have an amazing team that you can just depend upon. So, well, and, and tell us, cause that's part of the niche of running this successful, let me just say one thing before I actually say that I want to summarize what I take away from what you just said. And that is successful people do what other people aren't willing or able to do. Correct. Mm -hmm. It is a humbling, humbling thing to start selling out of your trunk saying, I'll be literally, I'll come to you whenever, tell me the time, but because you were willing to do what other people Sometimes their ego or pride get in the way of them saying, you know, they're too good to do that. They could never see themselves doing that. You did all that and it freaking blew up for you. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. on Thank that. you. No, it, it honestly did like immediately. I, I think I made like the first month, a little bit less than six figures in the first month. What? Now we just kept going. It was, it was honestly, it was crazy. I was like, what in the world? But I, and then I went to, it's funny because like sometimes when I go, I did a photo shoot in LA recently and I seen a company that's all they did was mobile delivery for hair extensions. And it was like 10 o'clock at night and we were like, we're, we, we need some more hair. And then I called this place up and they came. I was like extremely excited. Like, you know, like you got to do the things people aren't willing to do and you got to think outside of the box. Like you just got to think outside of the box, make it a unique concept. And I mean, you're in a different, like, you know, league of your own. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. I'm like fired up. Okay. So running a niche business, 
you take that seriously, even as it pertains to the way you hire. Talk to us about why you recruit the type of people you do. To make my life easier. Wait. <laughs> you know, really? you need you need people. Well, I mean, one, it's about I have I say all these things like we're the hair extension experts. I can't say those things and back, not back that back that up. So when people come to us, they're accept expecting an exceptional service. So we have to always deliver. And if let's say I can't like, you know, for some reason we get sick, which happens, we're human. Um, and one thing I'm very big on is I, I don't think I've ever canceled on anyone because one, it's like sometimes with hair extensions and wigs, it could be like a special occasion. It could be their wedding. It could be a birthday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so it's, we always have to have a backup in place that can deliver the same expertise that we have. And um, another one of my mentors, which I love, her name's April Esposito. She always used to tell me this, uh, inspect what you expect from people. So mm -hmm. even though I know that they do a really great job, I still have to inspect their work and not, because even myself, sometimes I realize sometimes I type, I can take shortcuts in corners if I know how to do it. You know, once you do something really well, you figure out ways to do it easier and it might not be at the level that I need it to be. So it's always great to inspect what you expect from people. And everybody listening just sense the energy Nikia has and how your energy is just hyped just by being around <laughs> you. I'm just sure that you hear that all the time. Well, yes, biggest... and, but you know what? I, I I honestly love your podcast. Um, you know, it's Thank this you. is the industry I love the most. I I do a lot of business podcasts, but you know, they always try to like downplay hairstylists and salon owners. Like, we don't make a lot of money, and we, you know, we didn't have, we don't have a four year degree or whatever the case may be. But I know people making six and seven figures in this industry. So yep. you know, we have 100%. a lot to offer and a lot to from people to learn from. So you know, thank you. I get feedback that I have a soothing voice, and I'm like, well, I hope I'm not putting you to sleep. This is like not NMPR or whatever it's called <laughs> radio. <laughs> like, uh, well, you have a good voice. You have a good voice. For this. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so the niche, the riches are in the niches. That's the, maybe we should have called it that. The riches are in the niches, and like not only do you hire the way you do, but it's the services you provide, which you've told us kind of a lot about, but educate us on what makes your hair different, special, and really the path that people should be paying attention to, which by the way, if you're listening and you're like, I want to look into this hair for my salon, we have the link in our bio, but tell us about it. Well, you know, I, I source hundred percent human hair. I make sure it's ethically sourced, meaning that, um, you know, I would say, well, I, I know a lot about the industry. So 90% of the world's hair comes from Asia and, um, and India specifically. A lot of people donate their hair to temples and they don't know that the temples then sell the hair. But what we do is we go down to the, the individual donors and we give them a fair amount of money for their hair. We, make, we don't mix it with synthetic fibers and or animals hairs. And what's so great about it is that it can do everything because it's 100% human hair. It can do everything that it, you have your own hair do. Um, it can be changed to any hair color. The only difference is that people don't realize this with hair extensions and wigs. We don't, it does not attach to a human body. So it doesn't have that natural body heat. So it does take longer to do a lot of things with um, human ha like hair extensions and wigs versus so on someone else's natural hair. Um, so I've been sourcing hair ethically for almost 20 years. I'm, you know, and I, I don't, I think I really am the best because, you know, sometimes I go to different like trade shows. Like I was recently at South by Southwest and people that I admire, I look up to like, you know, I'm like, they have to have great hair because I'm like, they, I, I look at, I'm like, they yeah. have to. And then when I see the product and I feel it, cause I can just automatically, I can just touch it and know what it is. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> like I just it's like at every a, level, the highest is as advertised. Yeah, it, and it, it it angers me though. It does anger me because the consumer is the one that loses out. They think they're buying human hundred percent human hair, and almost always they're not. And it's really Wait, it's like so you mentioned animal hair a minute ago, and I'm like yes. cringing. So what is up with this? It is like it's it's it actually regulated? very common. It's very common. It's very common, extremely common. Like almost all beauties. I did like, a, um, I had to do the research paper and I just wanted to like know a lot more about the industry. And this was a, several years ago and I hired a researcher and we did a lot of, we, do, we went to like, I went and did like some competitive shopping. Like, you know, like I pretended to be someone else like to see what, and it was like all the hair we tested was not a hundred percent human. And it was like almost at all these different beauty supply stores. Um, so it's, it's really. So this is not regulated. No, 
the hair the hair extent like the hair augmentation industry is not regulated at all um it's very sad but so people uh, could say it's human hair but it's not and yeah how do you trust it? You got to kind of know the brand, the body, you know, like, you. yeah, I always tell everyone, um, even for my own company, I say, go with, go see what everyone else is saying. Go to Google, look at the reviews, go to Yelp, look at the reviews, go to the better business bureau, look at the reviews, see what other people are saying, because even at the highest level, you're going to see a company that you're like, you know, you, they have really great brand awareness and brand recognition. But then when you look at the reviews and you have a thousand people saying the same thing, it's like, they just have really good marketing and advertising. They just have these pictures that they took and, you know, and the, the product isn't what it's supposed to be. I honestly have customers that have had the same hair for 10 years. I have clients that come to me with the same wig that they purchased 10 years ago. And we do a lot of um, hand making. So what differentiates us from a lot of people is that we take the measurements of the individual and we make the wig to their head mm. and, a lot of other places that were like, you know, it takes a month. We are so good at what we do. I could make a wig in, in like a couple hours. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's just, wow. I just, you know, this is what I love to do and I've been doing it so long. Um, But, you know, that's what different, I say we um procure, the, we just, we do two things. We procure the best available human hair and then we have that high quality craftsmanship. Those two things together just makes it like a one-stop solution. That is incredible. So- how do people get this hair? Do you offer education in? I do. I do. We do offer, I'm, I do a lot of um, one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes people come down for the day and then they shadow us for a day to see the different techniques. I'm really excited because I'm opening and launching a new business pretty soon. Um, it's a cosmetology and aesthetic school. Congrats. Um, thank you so much. And um, it's interesting because the first person I said, you know what, I know all of the pain points I had with this, <laughs> this business. And I was like, you know what, I need an incredible co-founder um, and someone I really admired in this street. And I contacted them and they were, they were on a board immediately. I thought I would have to persuade them and be like, oh, this is what you got to do. They were like, no, this is really great. And what's exciting is that they actually opened up my eyes to what the business could be. So we're actually opening it also up on the metaverse. Um, and I'm very old, so I didn't know anything about virtual reality. Tell everybody you know people, what, yes, the metaverse is. I thought Facebook took that down or something. Was listen, it's up. it's crazy. Like the metaverse is ridiculously, like it's a whole augmented virtual reality world where people shop on in, in the metaverse right now. Like you can shop, you could be at your house and shop at the Gucci store in Paris. And then that same day, they could deliver, the Gucci store can deliver a bag to your house. Like the things that are happening is like, it's like, it's kind of shocked me. I was like, what? I was like, I don't understand. How can someone get learned at their house? How can they like learn how to do hair? They need to be in, like, it needs to be in person. They're like, she's like, no, I'm teaching. She's already teaching like lash classes and like body contouring in the metaverse. It's like, oh, I just got to get one of those things, put it on yeah. my eyes. <laughs> I'm in Paris right now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you, you're, <laughs> you're like, you're so deep into it. Like, it feels like you're really there. And I buy everything, but really it's, you know, the Chicago yeah. location is shipping it today. It's not yeah. actually, but I get it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That is We're, incredible. I don't know if I oh, should be scared about that or excited. I was, I honestly, I was scared when she first told me, I was like, she was like, no, I saw your face when you said it. I was like, okay. I, I mean, I just got on Facebook maybe like 10 years ago. <laughs> nice. Like, I'm like, I'm not. I'm not on TikTok yet really like that much and stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, old school, but that's the way the world's working. So you have to move that way. Um, and I, what really is cool too, is because um, like there is no accredited cosmetology school in the United States that they changed the, the ruling because of COVID. So there are like hybrid locations where you could be online and in person, but we really want to be like the first accredited cosmetology and aesthetic school that anyone can attend virtually anywhere in the United States. And they have the backing of, you know, they can get federal funding to take the, the courses and stuff like that. So that's what I'm really excited about. So if we can kind of change the industry a little bit, that makes me like extremely excited. Which is another niche for you. Which is <laughs> I mean, well, you know what, though, honestly, the reason why I really wanted to open up a cosmetology school is because I feel like what's missing is sometimes that the business fundamentals, like we didn't learn how to do a business plan. We don't learn how to do strategic planning or financing. We don't learn about a profit and loss statement. And majority of cosmetology um, 
students, they're either going to be freelancers where they're doing it on their own or, you know, so so they, we need to know these things. We need to know how to build a business the correct way. So that's what I'm most excited 100%. about. Like, you know, not only just the skill set, but the information to 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 build a real thriving business. But if somebody buys your hair right now for their salon, they carry intriguing hair. Mm -hmm. Without I also no, they can also or... um do private label too. We do a lot of we do a lot more private label than um them selling our specific brand. Um so I, we do private label and just be, if you go to our website and you see products that we don't sell, I also source hair for other salon owners um and brands that are not the products that we sell. If anyone's looking for to get the highest quality of hair, I'm the person you should contact because I'll yeah. make sure I put you in touch with the right people. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about sending off ten thousand to fifty thousand dollars worth of hair and getting not the product that you um purchase. So, um, yeah, that's scary. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and that, that's usually how people come to me, like, "Oh my God, I just had the worst experience of my life." I'm like, uh, you know. And with your actual hair extension methods, I know hair extensions are kind of hot right now. We'll see mm -hmm. if that's gonna sizzle a little bit because I'm seeing. Mm -hmm celebrities trending with shorter hair and I'm seeing actually more wigs yes because of celebrities so let's talk hair extensions for a moment what's your kind of modality with application well we, I know how to do all applications but I do think it's honestly important to go to someone that is certified because a lot of the issues women face today with hair loss sometimes happen to be the hair extension applications that were done incorrectly um and I think you know, what's really big right now is like tape, tape and hair extensions. Um, everyone's doing them now. And I see people like t doing courses, they learn it in two hours and now they're doing a course themselves. And <laughs> it's really bad, but yeah. it's also about the, um, not only including the application, but also making sure like you're going back to the professional to get it taken out correctly. That's yeah. extremely important because that's where I see people cutting their own hair, not oh, realizing what's the hair extension, what's not. Um, so I always advise someone to go to someone that's certified and knows what they're doing. Um, yeah. and I always tell people, cause when people contact, it's like, well, I want to get a roller set or I want to do this. I'm like, well, this is what we specialize in. I, we don't do everything because we want, what we do, we want to do perfectly. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many different types of hair in the hair industry. There's a million things I could be doing. I could be doing locks. I could be doing, you know, like, so, but this is what we specialize in. And I always think to go to someone that, you know, that they're, an expert at their craft in that versus like doing every single thing. Cause even yeah. when I um was coming up now, it's like you learn more, but I remember when they were like, what do you want to specialize in? Do you want to specialize in color or cutting? You couldn't do both. <laughs> mm, yep. So. That's so interesting. Okay. So beauty industry, where do you see it heading in the next two to five years? I mean, I think it's, it's in a really great space. Um, there's so many like niche businesses. I feel like I see like that is where I see it going, like where people just specialize in one thing, like someone's just specializing in natural hair, someone just specializing in blonde color and balayage. Like I, there's so many different things that you can do. And I think once you become the expert in that, um, there's just so much potential for business growth. Well, you're amazing. Before we're done, uh, you know, what would be just kind of final words of wisdom for everybody listening today and when they're trying to think of like how can I create more of a niche with my beauty business um I will say that um it's it's really important to follow your passion and your dreams and to love what you do that way you're never working really a day in your life you are so cute thank you so much for being here Nikki I'm so thank excited that I finally me. got to meet you I hope I get to meet you in person someday Yes. Congratulations on your massive success. And I would love to stay in touch with you. I will definitely be in, stay in touch and I will be definitely keep listening to your podcast because it's one I enjoy. So I appreciate that so much. You have no idea. And thank <laughs> you all for joining us here week after week. If you appreciate Beyond the Technique, would you take just a moment and leave us a positive review wherever you're listening so that more people like yourself will discover Beyond the Technique where we're here to change the way that you are supported in your business. Until next time, have an awesome day and stay strong.